The ACORN study is the largest in the nation so far. It involves data gathered from more than 70 savings and loans and banks in the Dallas area on literally thousands of loans. It indicates that the practice of redlining is widespread and significant in the Dallas area. Banks drawing boundaries around minority neighborhoods and refusing to lend there. It's called redlining. And by 1976, it was already a 30-year-old problem. The report says the differences in home loan investments are tremendous. To help cure the cancer of redlining, in 1977, President Jimmy Carter signed the Community Reinvestment Act. It required banks to meet the credit needs of the entire community, not just the wealthier and the whiter. But it's 45 years later, and our ongoing investigation shows still today 20% of the banks in Dallas County draw maps that redline all or parts of the largely minority community that lives below I-30. Banks in general lend relatively little money below I-30, and federal regulators allow all of this to go on. So now it's time to talk about a solution. We have big headlines from big banks as far as these uh, investments <laughs> uh, in the community, but are they going to go to the areas in which they're really needed? James McGee is a former bank compliance manager who runs the nonprofit Southern Dallas Progress, and he's got a solution to improve lending below I-30. It's called a responsible banking ordinance. Here's how it works. You might not realize it, but local governments keep your tax dollars in banks, the same banks you and I use. An ordinance like this would require a local government to evaluate how well a bank serves all of its citizens from high to low income. What do you think could come out of something like that? I think it would be very powerful, very uh, effective. I mean, like so you have somebody local as for city government, also the community holding them accountable for what they're doing, you know, here. No local governments in North Texas have a policy like this. But 13 cities around the country do have some form of a responsible banking ordinance. In theory, the idea works because local governments are good bank customers, and that gives them leverage. The city of Dallas uses Bank of America, where it has $257 million on deposit. Dallas County also works with Bank of America with deposits of $215 million. Dallas ISD is with Wells Fargo at $39 million. And Parkland Hospital District has $6.7 million with Chase, $28 million with Regions Bank, and $371 million with Bank of New York Mellon. That is $917 million of taxpayer money. And James says he's not singling out these institutions for doing anything wrong, but if banks want to keep the taxpayers' deposits, he believes local governments can incentivize them to do better. What kind of ethical obligation does a city or a county have to make sure that the bank they use is lending money to minorities and low-income people. I mean, they have a huge ethical uh, responsibility. I mean, probably our right to ask what our bank is doing is also the city's uh, right to ask, you know, what is that bank doing? Where are you investing your money? Where are you issuing loans? It's a similar picture in Tarrant County. The city of Fort Worth banks with Chase at $117 million in deposits. Tarrant County is with Chase also at $605 million, and so is Fort Worth ISD, where it has $22 million. And JPS Hospital District has $57 million with Chase and $21 million with Southside Bank. Combined, that's $822 million of taxpayer money. We can make sure that community banking works for all people. Trey Black is a prominent business leader below I-30. He runs a second-generation company with more than 250 employees. He says he has a good relationship with his current bank, but he has at times been treated unfairly when applying for loans. Look, we've been offered predatory rates, bottom line. Uh, we have had issues with excessive terms. Uh, we have had issues with uh, ridiculous guarantees. And so those things we've pushed back against. Black supports the idea of local governments using their leverage to hold banks accountable. Yeah, I think the responsible banking ordinance is a matter of good governance now so that companies here locally can have greater access to capital. We need it. So how does it work? Banks are required to submit loan data that shows how much they lend and in what neighborhoods they lend in. And they submit a reinvestment plan that sets targets for future lending. 
Local government creates an oversight body to evaluate banks, publish findings, and hold community hearings. Philadelphia is one of those cities that has a responsible banking ordinance. Wilson Good Jr. is a former councilman there who helped get it passed 20 years ago. Now he consults with cities, including Philly, on responsible banking issues. You can have impact if you organize around the issue with the data um, in, in hand. Um, and, and the banks are forced to respond uh, because uh, they have uh, the government as a customer and because they have individual citizens as customers. Philadelphia combines a number of factors to rank banks on how well they distribute mortgage loans and business loans in low-income areas. Between 2008 and 2018, the banks that Philadelphia chose to make deposits with became more active lenders, increasing their share of business loans by 18% in low-income census tracts. The ACORN report holds lending institutions responsible for part of the decline of the inner city. A crippling lack of access to loans in minority neighborhoods. We've been talking about this problem for more than 45 years. James McGee says a responsible banking ordinance is a creative way for local governments to improve the lives of all taxpayers, regardless of the color of their skin or the neighborhood they live in. I'm David Schechter reporting.